I got really interested when I was writing the Silverwing books about the, the origins of bats, and I mean the very first bats. Um, and I really wanted to tell the story of the first flight. I just thought it would be an incredibly exciting moment to capture. And we don't really know that much about the history of bats. There's no um, fossil of the ancestor of bats. So it gave me an opportunity to create my own creature. And I call them chiropters in the story. They are um, like bats, but they don't flap. They glide from tree to tree and eat insects in the air. And I really wanted to tell the story of the very first bat, this creature who went from a glider to a flapper and has the first powered flight. Well, the book is set in the Paleocene era, and that's about 65 million to 55 million years ago. And it's an incredibly interesting time. It follows from a period called the Cretaceous. And at the end of the Cretaceous, um, there was a mass extinction event. Most people think it was a, a giant meteorite that hit the Earth around the Gulf of Mexico and blew up a big cloud of dust, which blocked out the sun and uh, basically eradicated a huge amount of, of animal life on the Earth. So it killed the dinosaurs. Now the Paleocene followed right after that. And what happened is the mammals, which previously had been really small uh, animals, a lot of them lived in the trees, um, they had no predators, or fewer predators, with the dinosaurs gone. And they were able to reproduce and become more and more numerous. And they sort of took over the Earth at this point. So the Paleocene made an amazing backdrop for the book because everything is changing. I got to write about the, the last dinosaurs, but also the first uh, carnivorous mammals. Research is important to me. I really want to create a credible world for my readers, and that means knowing about the, uh, the flora and fauna, you know, the plants, the animals. I want to know about the climate of the world I'm writing about. Because even though the books are fantasies, um, for my readers to buy into this world, they have to believe in the, in, the, in, the, in the groundwork, in the foundation of what I'm writing about. Dusk, the hero, is based on a, on a pre-bat. He's a chiropter, and he's half invention and half supposition um, based on the fossil record and what we know about the earliest bats. And the other main character is a, is a cat, an uh, early cat called Carnassial. And he's based on a prehistoric creature called uh, Myacus, which was really the, the father, if you will, of, of the dog and cat families. He was the first mammalian carnivore. And so I thought it was interesting to pair Dusk, the first bat, with the first cat, because they take parallel journeys in the book. They're both, uh, they're both outcasts because they do things differently uh, than all the other members of their colony. And they're really considered freaks or, or mutants in a way. Now in Silverwing, there's a lot of mention about um, the great battle between the birds and the beasts. It's part of the bat's history and it explains why they fly only at night, why they're not allowed to see the sun, why there's this smoldering war uh, with the birds and the beasts. And that to me was an interesting story to tell. So by going back, back, back in time, telling the story of the first bats, I got to sort of explain the history or mythology of the bats in the first three books. Um, you don't have to have read the first three books to appreciate Darkwing. I, I really see it very much as a standalone book. But, of course, if you're familiar with the first three books, uh, it will be more, sort of, more intriguing because you get to see how all the alliances and how all the animosities um, in those books sort of formed in the world of Darkwing.